okay? In the production area, in the 3D printing area, now I can see opportunities there. Well, it's gonna be tremendous opportunities there. I mean, you talk about billions of dollar industry basically being developed right now. So, you know, I've seen a lot of things, been around manufacturing for a long time, so I've seen a lot of things developed over that time. But this is one that has an unlimited amount of possibilities for entrepreneurs wanting to get into it. So I would say soak this stuff up, get those books that I mentioned so you can figure out how to, to apply those same principles to this new technology. I, I think it's new technology uh, anyway. I still want to know how that surgical instrument came out working. I mean, can somebody explain that to me? It, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, that assembly, who, which, which one is the surgical instrument group in here? Okay. Did that, were you able to print that surgical tool actually assembled? It came out assembled like that. See, that's amazing. That's just amazing because I'm in the assembly business. As a matter of fact, we have over 600, we have about 600 employees that do assembly work, sub-assemblies, things like that in, all, in the automotive industry. And that's amazing to think that you could eliminate that process by doing something like that. But what I would be looking at is how we can even add that to where you can, you know, mass produce, you might say, or produce at a much higher rate than that. How big are those injection, I'm not injection mode, but how big are those 3D printers? Can somebody ask that question? How big of a printer can you get today? I mean, <laughs> is there a printing houses? Yeah. Uh, so you, you're trying to say it's, un, it's, un, it's almost unlimited then as far as what you can print. Okay. So what I can see here is an opportunity for, if you haven't been thinking about it, I know everybody's thinking, what are you thinking about? If you're not thinking about entrepreneurship, you're probably thinking on about getting your degree and going and getting a job. But, you know, what I think about is how I can create jobs utilizing this type of technology. So if those of you that don't want to be entrepreneurs, See, see the, as a matter of fact, I'm, by the way, I'm on the board of overseers for, for UofL, so I've been a, an ambassador to UofL for several years. I'm serving my third term in that area. I'm also an adopted alumni of University of Louisville, so I am a, you know, this red and black wasn't by accident. I didn't, didn't wear this today because I was going to speak to you guys. I'm going to the game at 2 o'clock, by the way, so, so I won't be here that much longer. Uh, but at any rate, um, I can see an opportunity where we can create one of the highest quality manufacturing centers in the U.S. right here in Louisville. And I can see where you guys can be a part of that. And I hope that you would, uh, could see that vision. One thing as a, as a CEO and entrepreneur, you have to have vision, okay? That's what makes us different as entrepreneurs. That makes us different as having the vision. Now you got to have folks that make that particular vision materialize or that mission materialize. But that's kind of where it starts. That's my job right now, setting the vision for, for our company. And I can see a vision for 3D printing that's, that the sky is the limit. So if you guys can help me, I mean, we can put this thing together. And uh, uh, you can stay here when you get out of school, OK? And there will be jobs for you in this industry. Because this is the foundation, I think, of something that's going to be huge. And again, that's how entrepreneurs think. We're risk takers. Okay, you have to be willing to take a risk, and some folks are, are not always willing to do that, or not at first. Then as they develop, they get experience uh, under built, then, then it's easier to take risks, you might say. Um, but I would recommend in this particular area here is tremendous opportunity to start looking at it right now and taking uh, advantage of it and being right here. Again, think, uh, think and grow rich the Toyota way, the machine changed the world because it shows you how Toyota took this lean manufacturing practice and it has really changed the manufacturing throughout the world, okay? And by you reading these books, it gives you an advantage. It gives you like an up. It gives you a, a, a leg up on your competition, is what I'm trying to say, if they have not uh, read it. So take a look at that and I think, I, I think I've covered, have I covered what you want me to cover for the most part? Is there any questions for me? Any questions for me about entrepreneurship? Passion, passion. You have to have a passion for what you're doing. That's probably the one single word. Now you can, I would have said quality, but you said that. You said that several times in, 
in your question, but a passion for quality is probably the best single thing that I could say. That means you want to be the best, you want to do it the best possible way, uh, and so forth. And you don't want to sacrifice quality for anything. And that's been my particular passion, you might say. We've gotten business with Toyota, uh, Mercedes-Benz, Nissan, Honda, Kia, Hyundai. And one of the things that they said when they talked to us was that you guys seem to have a passion for quality. And that's throughout the organization. So, you know, it starts with me, but everybody within my organization, if you're thinking the right way, and you have manufacturers in your whip mix, as examples up here, I mean, they do a fantastic job at that company. I know the CEO of that, that firm. And we've been to manufacturing seminars and things like that where we talk about that, but that's always the key to what you, so a passion. So whether it be for quality or what it is you're trying to do, uh, you need to have a passion for it to be successful. You say, what do you do to maintain that passion? Well, you plan, you, you, plan, you plan your work, and then you work your plan, okay? Now, for instance, one of the things we do is called, the Japanese call it a hoshin. It's an annual plan, okay? So we have an annual plan at my company for whatever our expectations are. So whatever we're expecting to do for the next year, as an example, okay? And you, again, it's your plan. So, so we actually lay out each particular area. So quality, quality. Uh, uh, delivery, service, safety, all these very different areas. Each one of them has a, a targeted expectation. And throughout the year, we check that, okay? So as long as you're continuing to improve by meeting those targets, and even if you don't, it's called plan, do, check, that. Okay, that's the circle in which they operate. And, you, and if you don't exactly hit where you are, then you had to put in a plan to still make it happen. So I guess the passion that we talk about with quality, but the most important thing is continuous improvement of whatever that plan is. So it's a never ending journey. You know, you continue to try to get better and better all the time at what you do. So in order to keep that passion going, you got to know, okay, maybe I didn't hit it this time, but I'm gonna keep moving in the direction to meet that goal that was set. So you have to start off with that plan, that goal, and then work towards it. Okay? And if it doesn't work at first, start over and go after again. Start over, but keep moving forward to continue to improve. Anybody else? Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask the question. Does, does getting an MBA make you a better entrepreneur? <laughs> You've already answered. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it will make you, it will make, it should make you a more educated entrepreneur. You know, it doesn't, it may not necessarily make you a better risk taker. In fact, it might keep you from taking risks because of your education. You, you understand what I'm saying? But there's no substitute for education, okay? I'm a continuous student. In fact, I'll be going back to school next year. I'll be going back to school next year. And because I never did get, I got it, I have a two year, I have a medical, med, I went to school for mechanical engineering technology, community college level, for about 10 years, okay? Why? Because I wanted to learn all the time. I'm a continued student. I'm a lifelong learner, even to this day, okay? When most people are sleeping, I'm, I'm in front of a computer, I'm learning something. I'm on the internet, I'm learning something every day, every day, okay? And so with an MBA, I'm, I'm going to go back for MBA. But I had to get the first, I had to get the undergrad degree first. But my point is, because I've always taken the courses that I knew I had to have to get ahead, to continue to improve, okay? But now, I'm getting things I need to know to make me better, make my business better. So the things I don't know, I have to go learn about. And that's where the MBA comes in. I wish I had an MBA, okay? I would be better today if I had one, if that answers your question. And probably a lot of mistakes I've made, I would not have made them, if I had the education that an MBA provides. So I would say, you know, it may not make you take more risk, but it will make you better. It was just like positive thinking, okay? Positive thinking won't allow you to do everything, okay? Because I mean, if I'm not, you know, if I'm not uh, um, a star basketball player, it's gonna, gonna make me shoot better. It's not gonna make me shoot everything. It's not gonna make me be a LeBron James, okay? but it will make me do everything better 
than I would if I didn't have a positive attitude about things. That same thing with the MBA, you know, that allows you to do some things better if you have that. So I would recommend uh, MBAs. I mean, I, I, need, I need a couple engineers right now. You got any industrial engineers in the house here? <laughs> you are. <laughs> any, more, any more questions? So Kevin, if you're looking to take a capsule design class, talk to me. <laughs> Well, you know, now the course I'm going after is the one that gives you credit for working experience. So I don't have to go to school that long, you know, but, but I, I'll continue to learn because of this thing. I mean, I'm in classes all the time. I recommend you guys uh, doing the same thing. And, and think about it. When you get where I am, you're going to wish you had done these things. Right now, you have the opportunity to do them right now. You know, I wish I had done what you're doing, you know, when I was at your age is what it boils down to. I wish I'd done it. So now I'm now I'm going back and doing some things that's going to help me because I still have a few years left, you know. I mean, I, I turned 60 in, in, in October, okay, and I plan on uh, having a succession plan that's going to work for me for the next five years, and then, then I'm going to do something else is what it boils down to. But that's kind of my target right now is in five years I want to be able to turn it over to, to someone else, either sell it or, or someone else within my family perhaps. That would do it. By the way, this is my neighbor, and we actually met on a treadmill, okay, and <laughs> on, in a gym. On no, no kidding, on the treadmill. That's where we met, uh, what, what a year, year or so ago, and we've been friends ever since because we have a lot of common um, ideas, common philosophies, common practices. So I mean, I, I applaud you for what you're doing here at the uh, University of Louisville, and and. Uh, Hang in there with us, and uh, you know I, I'm going to this game today because I'm still mourning the the U of L UK game right now, and uh, so I got to get a little, hopefully get some of that back this afternoon. <laughs> Any other questions? So what we, um, thanks a lot, Kevin. I uh, appreciate you taking some time off on Sunday, and uh, encouraging 95% of my class that does not want to look, take a serious look at entrepreneurship, don't have that belief in what is it that they can do themselves to change the world that they are in, to give it another thought, at least for another minute. 